Hey everybody, it's Tara Green, and I'm here to tell you about the U.S. second exact Pluto return, which is today, July the 11th. Uh, it, the first hit appeared to be right at midnight, so but it will last for a number of hours, if not days, because Pluto is not moving very quickly, although Pluto is retrograde, and it was retrograde when the U.S. was conceived, uh, or born, actually, on July the 4th, 1776, and of course, there you can see on the inside here, we have the U.S. Sibley chart, the most recognized chart. It has 13 degrees, 12, 13 degrees, Sag rising. There's Pluto at exactly 27 degrees, 33 minutes retrograde. Now, the U.S. has is experiencing three of these exact Pluto returns this year. The first one already happened on February the 20th, 2022, which is 2 um, And Pluto was not retrograde then. So in fact, that one, uh, which coincided with the U Russia invading Ukraine and, you know, the U.S. being involved in that, um, already happened with Pluto not retrograde. So actually this one now, even though I find that most astrologers are not talking about this one that much, is actually much more exact because Pluto is in retrograde motion as it was when the U.S. was founded. The third exact transit is on December the 28th and Pluto will be direct again. So let's pay attention to what's going on in this chart because this chart then kind of governs the next, you know, until we get to the third uh, return here and into the future. So let's see, the moon, which is the mood of the people is sitting exactly on the U.S. ascendant here, right? Which is again, 13 degrees of Sag. Okay, so the people are what are rising very literally. <laughs> Astrology is very literal in the U.S. chart now. Okay, you can see the moon is opposite Uranus. This is the U.S. natal Uranus. So in blue here on the inside, this is the Sibley chart. This is where all the planets were when the U.S. was founded. You can see the sun at 12, 13, Cancer, Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, retrograde in the U.S. chart. The North Node is at six degrees of Leo there in the eighth house. You can see Neptune up there at 22, Virgo, conjunct Lilith, actually up there in its ninth house. Uh, the Midheaven is very early, Libra, Saturn is in the 10th house of the U.S.'s own world status. That means they're a world leader, supposedly a peaceful leader there with Juno and Eros there. Um, Pluto is in the U.S.'s second house of resources, of tools, of values, of self-esteem. Okay, so those issues, Pluto representing the soul of the world, the world soul, representing your individual soul, representing a country's soul. So Pluto always represents the secrets, the unconscious, the motivating factors. Pluto is plutocracy, it's wealth. So the wealth of the nation, the power of the nation, uh, however it's expressed, it's in Capricorn, so the immense wealth and resources that the U.S. held uh, when the U.S. was first created, untapped, unknown, uh, but definitely felt. Um, and Pluto becoming a world power. Capricorn is the sign of worldly power. So indicative of, you know, where Pl the U.S. was going to go in the world. Now, you know, they were astrologers. The founding fathers, they were Masons, they were deeply into mysticism. And of course, if you go to Washington, D.C., you can see it's totally all planned out and they have the Egyptian obelisks and all of that. Now, um, okay, so the Pluto is there. The south node of the U.S. is in Aquarius there in its second house. The, the U.S. moon is also in Aquarius right there. And right now, Saturn is conjunct it, okay, at 24 degrees of Aquarius retrograde is conjunct the U.S. moon there. So again, it's a sobering, it is restrictive, it is conservative. Saturn rules Capricorn and Aquarius. So Saturn rules the U.S. natal soul and rules the moon, which represents women. So restrictions on women and the moon represents the womb. So very literally restrictions on women's wombs, abortion, all of that stuff. And there's Athena, the battle goddess, the strategy goddess connected to the womb. So it's really the women that are the strategic seers into the future, you know, uh, Aquarius. So, you know, the U.S. was founded at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution as well. So this is all tying into that because you got to remember, of course, the U.S. was breaking off from Britain. All right, so there's Saturn retrograde. And again, this restriction, this limitation, this obstacles, and it really pretends to revolution, of course. The U.S. has a revolutionary moon. The people are revolutionary. You know, it is about freedom, uh, apparently. Now, 
uh, the US series is in Pisces. You can see that there, Vesta, the root word of investments, investments is on series right now in the natal third house. Uh, Juno is conjunct Neptune right now. Neptune is about 25 degrees uh, Pisces. And again, when the first Pluto return happened, Neptune was exactly opposite its natal position at 22 degrees. And the number 22, you know, besides we're still in the year 22, um, we got to remember that Saturn and Pluto came together on January the 12th, 2020 at 20, 20, 22 degrees Capricorn as well. So that mystical, magical number 22, which is the 22 Hebrew letters of the alphabet, the 22 major arcana or trumps in the tarot, that number 22, the master number, keeps coming up here. Uh, Jupiter's in Aries here, and Jupiter is in the fourth house. So again, there's a kind of a hiding the light. You know, Jupiter in Aries wants to make new beginnings, but again, it's kind of happening deep down um, within the soul of the nation. The IC represents the roots, the ancestors, so a new beginning or a new reiteration of what the country began on. You know, there's all of this talk, of course, about reparations. So if we were looking at the natal Pluto return chart, you can see the ascendant of the chart for the Pluto return is right on the IC. So again, the new beginning for where the U.S. is heading, which is for this exact moment of the second Pluto return, is actually totally imbalanced with the IC, the roots of the nation. Uh, also, the U.S. is in its Chiron return. It's in its fifth Chiron return. And so that's why, again, the U.S. is hurting. The people are hurting. Again, this is in the fourth house. They're hurting with housing. They're hurting with, you know, being able to be free and start new things and to be independent, you know. So, again, this is power struggles. You know, Aries, power, force, anger. Uh, Mars is in early Taurus there. And I believe Mars is squaring. What is Mars squaring there? squaring something there. I've got my notes here and now I can't read them. Um, Mars in early Taurus there, that's by transit in the fifth house. Uranus in Taurus again, conjunct the north node again, right in the fifth house of the U.S. Um, an interesting thing here is the U.S. natal Mars is in early Gemini, five degrees Gemini, I believe. And there's Venus exactly conjuncted. So this is really interesting because this is a sacred marriage, uh, a sense of a truce or a communications about men and women uh, intellectually, analytically, asking questions. It has to do with everything that's in print, everything that's being sold, merchandise. So there's a definitely a dialogue here, but definitely a connection. The mask and the feminine on the same wavelength is a really important symbol. Okay, there. So, and it's in the seventh house. So this Pluto return can also symbolize on a mu more mundane level, relationships starting up, uh, questioning relationships, what are they all about, you know, what is the nature of them, you know, in true Gemini fashion. It could also indicate people having more than one relationship at a time and open relationships and um, a lot of mutability, a lot of changeableness in relationships. So you can see Mercury right there. Mercury is about to conjunct the sun on the weekend. Mercury is conjunct the U.S. sun there with Lilith. And so Lilith conjunct the sun. Of course, Lilith is the denied shadow of the power of the feminine. She was the first woman in the Old Testament. She just represents women's intrinsic connection to nature. They are nature, right? Nature is the death bringer and the birth giver. And so Lilith is the death bringing goddess aspect that was created first. Okay, so there, this is, she's considered to be the goddess of abortion. So again, abortion being a very big issue there. Um, and then Mercury in Cancer. So you know, people can't help separating their feelings from their thoughts right now. So people are feeling very, very emotional. There's also a big sunspot that was unleashed today, which is going to hit the earth in a couple of days, right on that full moon in Capricorn. Um, and then Ceres, the great mother there, connected to the part of fortune in the U.S. and Lake Cancer and Mercury. So Ceres, the great mother um, in the sign of Cancer, you know, bringing fortune, so this sense of embracing women and motherhood and nurturing and food and our land and what we need to feel emotionally safe. Those are things that we need to do for ourselves um, and in the world. Now that is in the eighth house of change and transformation in the U.S. Sibley chart, this natal chart here. Okay, um, You can see that you know there's the North Node in Leo. You can see that there's no outer planets through all of this sector. Um, the south node is 
in the 11th house there in Scorpio. I find the moon right on the ascendant really uh, interesting opposite Uranus uh, in Gemini there because it's definitely Uranus rules the sign of Aquarius and modern astrology it represents revolution and freedom. So the moon symbolizing the women and the moon of the people want to be free. They want to break out. Okay, they want to be able to have free speech. That's Gemini. They don't want censorship, but this is also an issue that's going on. Censor censorship and limitations, sanctions with other countries, foreign countries. Sagittarius represents travel. So again, travel is, is rather difficult or erratic right now. It's better to take short journeys. Uranus and Gemini, short journeys, short flights. Um, the moon in Sagittarius means that there can be secret, hidden, foreign connections to everything that's going on in the U.S. right now. And again, because it's opposite Uranus and Gemini, it means it could be totally different than what you think it is. It could be totally unexpected, a big wild card, um, some big high-tech firms involved in this, like shaping people's opinions, shaping social media. I mean, I think we all know that's been going on. Okay. So what to expect from the second Pluto return? Because this is a process, because the first one got set, you would go back and look at everything that's happened since February 20th. Again, the war in Ukraine had started three days after that exact return, I believe, uh, predicted by a few astrologers. And so now with Pluto, again, opposite the part of fortune of the U.S., it's almost like the U.S.'s whole wealth base of um, water, water rights is going to be a big issue, food, um, home, safety, uh, homeland security, all that stuff, right? And series there. Put opposite series. It's definitely um, the earth will fight back. You will see earth changes, probably floods um, with that going on, floods, uh, but also the opposite can be droughts, can be earth shaking, earthquakes, you know, Pluto and Capricorn is literally earthquakes. Um, and Pluto and Capricorn is, you know, shaking up the the whole economic market, that's another thing. And that's where, you know, Venus, Venus and Gemini right now, things are very changeable. They're, they're turning on a dime, you know. Um, so it also represents this sense that people don't really know what's going on. Mars, uh, Venus, it's sort of like a nice balance, but people are kind of not mature enough. There's not enough evidence out there. Um, we're not being given the full picture, all of that. So you can see all the lines, all the stress lines here between the planets, you know, things are intense. That Neptune-Neptune opposition is still going on. And so that's why people are wondering, I don't know what's going on. Why can't we tell what's going on? And it's very destabilizing and that's done on purpose. And that is the Venus, Mars, and Gemini. That's about pitting opposites. You know, it is like the card of the lovers is Gemini in the tarot which is the attraction of the opposites, but also the name of the game is to split and divide people, okay? And it's almost like you could say, well, this was designed that way from the beginning, Mars and Gemini. So whether the founding fathers were aware of what they were doing uh, or not, uh, you know, Mars and Gemini is a divisive speech, dividing races, classes, you know, all of that. And Venus wants relationships, so Venus wants to bring things together. Um, you know, in America, it's supposed to be all about mom and apple pie there, you know, the the sun and Venus and Jupiter together. And, you know, and then there's Lilith right now going, well, you know, it really is about the forbidden fruit, uh, not about mom and apple pie. Um, what else did I want to say here? We were, I was going to talk about where Lilith was in the U.S. natal chart. chart. Where is she? Lilith, where are you now? Ah, okay, she's conjunct Neptune, of course. Um, so as we are looking at this chart today, the asteroid Psyche, which represents the soul, the root word of psychology, is conjunct to Lilith. And so you can tap into Lilith as a psychic energy and entity. She is the one who didn't want to follow the rules. She said, I will not be below Adam. I will not be below anyone else. I insist on equality, equanimity. Uh, that's a matriarchy, right? That's you know, nobody's above anybody else. They forget those hierarchies. And that's really what Aquarius is all about. You know, those those double waves are traditionally, you know, it was water, but it's also electrical energy, and especially in this day and age, um, it's definitely electrical energy, the internet, right? So there can be also, with Saturn conjunct the moon, there are um, limitations, again, on internet, on 
things being able to be moved around, uh, travel, kind of limits on new ideas, it's sort of that closing of the mind rather than an opening of the mind. You know, they're kind of, there's legislation in the states about banning books. It's like we're back to Fahrenheit 451, you know. Science fiction became real. Okay, or we're living in the twilight zone here. We're a simul, simul, simulacrum or, you know, uh, we're a glitch in the matrix right now. Um, again, Uranus conjunct to the North Node is really important there, connected to the U.S. Vesta uh, investments. That's, that's the bull market, and it's definitely, you know, not stable. Uh, again, you, you do need to watch out for the plug being pulled on the Internet because then your cryptocurrency is worth, worth nothing. And as what I feel is the, the powers that be that are, that are fighting over the territory right now, and I think they feel like they're not winning, they're going to get more and more desperate and do really crazy, wild things. Okay, you got to remember that at 9-11, um, Pluto was sitting right on the U.S. Ascendant, and Saturn was opposite, right, uh, actually. And so, in some ways, because the moon represents memories, you want to think back about what, what was going on at 9-11 and how the 9-11 story, because Sagittarius is about storytelling, how it was presented, okay? For those who are inquiring minds, I think they know that that was a setup. Um, my intuition, my spirit guides, literally I saw the, the second tower go down live on TV. Um, my spirit guides literally punched me in the stomach and said this was an inside job. The U.S. did it to themselves and they just sacrificed saw a few thousands of people on the pretext of starting this whole terrorism and it was the beginning of kind of mass control but the mass control thing has been you know going on for a long time so what else can we say here so again neptune opposite neptune really hard to know what's going on because we're under the veil of illusion it's like people are in denial and they're in addictions and Pisces is mental illness and health. If there's health issues, if people are worried about their health, they're worried about 12th house dying, um, dying alone, being incarcerated. You know, those are all Pisces issues. You know, addictions, uh, whatever it is to video games or being on the internet or shop, shop uh, buying or whatever you're doing there, sex, money, power, control, secrets, that's all Pluto stuff as well. Um, I think the nation is totally addicted and needs to go into rehab. I think everybody, basically, my feeling these days is that everybody, 99.9% .9 of the people are all considered to be PTSD, just from the nature of this crazy culture we've been born into and we accept as being normal, but is the most crazy, hideous, demonic, off-balance culture that's ever existed in the world, I believe. So we have to be the ones who take the veil off, you know, pull the veil off and are willing and bold enough and smart enough and daring enough to look deep down in that abyss of the darkness of the soul. This is the dark night of the soul. That's what's going on for the U.S. and for each one of us as individuals. And so all of the shadows, that's what Pluto represents. All the shadows are coming up. There's fear. Uh, you think you're going to die. You think you're not. You're not going to get through it. Um, but this is a necessary part. You know, this is a, a stage in the alchemical rebirth where we rise like the phoenix. You know, the U.S. symbol is the eagle, but that's the second stage of Scorpio as it goes through its major rebirth from being the scorpion, where it stings, where it's on just survival mode, and then it evolves into the eagle. It rides a little higher, uh, connected to spirit, and then eventually it has to self-immolate, it burns up in its own ashes to be reborn from those ashes again. So, you know, we're not even at that third stage. So, you know, I will look at what the third Pluto return looks like. Um, and so my advice to you is really listen to your dreams and really think about your highest goals and wishes. That's what Sagittarius is all about. It's like the moon is like what's in your DNA. It's what you inherited from your mother, from your ancestors. Sagittarius is about the sage wisdom, the teacher, the philosopher, asking the big, deep, honest questions. It's truth, it's philosophy, it's higher education, it's intelligence. Um, it's also having some optimism and some humor. You gotta remember that, humor is really important. Um, and justice, you know, we want to have authentic justice. Um, sacred law justice, which is under the Jupiter's rule in, in native teachings, uh, not man-made law. Okay, so 
it's really a fight about the plutocracy right now. You know, Pluto demolishes everything it touches. So theoretically, Pluto is supposed to be destroying all of those corporate structures. And we're in the process of that. Okay, so do what you need to make yourself feel safe, to have resources. Remember the south node right now. Um, it's in Aquarius. Uh, that's the U.S. South Node, and Pluto is going to enter that, enter Aquarius in March 23rd, 2023. And in the next, I would say by 2025, 2026, when Neptune enters Aries, which is a brand new beginning, Pluto will be sitting on the U.S. South Node. And so, you know, that might be really when the real revolution starts and, you know, all of the old just gets siphoned off and goes down the drain. Um, because a revolution is always a new beginning. So this is what the U.S. is at. What is the U.S.? Is it a democratic country? What it was founded on, where it's at now, you know? So these are big ticket questions and issues. And of course, the U.S. still supposedly being the most powerful country in the world. Uh, China is a big uh, factor as well. Um, and I can look at the U.S. and uh, China as well at another point. But just wanted to get this out to you today. I uh, want to send you many, many blessings. If you want to follow me, I'm at terratero.com. Um, if you like what I do, you can also send tips to PayPal. It's PayPal me, Tara Green, Tarot Astro. And uh, sending you many blessings. All right.